Here we have some problems about finding absolute extrema. And the extrema of a function are the high points and the low points. So where the function is the biggest and where it's the smallest. So we're finding the absolute biggest and smallest points on an interval. So it's not the whole function because often functions go out to infinity. And so it would be hard to find the extrema out at infinity. So let's say you had some kind of function. You don't know what it's doing. It could be all over the place. And let's say you're going on an interval from negative 2 to 3. So here's negative 2, here's 3, and you're looking what are the high points and the low points. And a couple of things could happen. It could be somewhere in between those two ends. So here it looks like we have our lowest point. The good news is that this point is a point where the tangent line is going to be having a slope of 0. And what that means is we can take the derivative of the function and find the zeros of the derivative to locate those points uh, of either uh, maxima or minima that are between the intervals. You could also have a situation where one of those points falls right on the interval. And th in this case, I've, I've drawn it so that it looks like that's an, um, you know, a, a max there too where the slope is zero, but it might not be. What if uh, we had done from negative one to three? This point might be the high point of that interval, even though it's not going to be a zero of the, of the derivative. So you have to test the endpoints and you have to, have to test the zeros of the derivative. So that's what we're going to do. Let me show you how this works. Here we're locating the absolute extrema of this function on the closed interval from negative 2 to 3. So the first thing we're going to do is take the derivative of this thing and find the zeros to see if we have some points in this interval to test that are like this one. So let's take the derivative. Uh, let's see, that would be 6x squared minus 6x minus 12, and then we'll set that equal to 0. Let's take a 6 out of there, and we've got x squared minus x minus 2. And we can factor that, and we've got x minus 2 times x plus 1. So x equals 2, and that is in our interval. And x equals negative 1, that is also in our interval. So we've got four points to test, these two and these two, and we'll compare their values. And from here, it's really just a simple thing. I'm going to make a chart to do this where we have some x values. In this case, it's the zeros we found of the derivative. So we've got, and we've got these endpoints. So I've got negative 2, I've got negative 1, I've got 2, and I've got 3. And what you want to do is plug them all into the original function and see which are the high points and which are the low points. Sometimes the math gets a little um, uh, painful when you have, you know, high powers and so forth. But uh, hopefully uh, that won't be too difficult here. Let's see what we've got. So negative 2. So that would be negative 8 and 16, negative 16. Um, so we'd have negative six, 16 minus 12 minus 24. Whoops, plus 24 plus 5. So that would be, it looks like that crunches out to uh, 1. I think so. So I've got negative 2 and w having the value 1. Let's try the next one, negative 1. So that gives us negative 2 minus 3 plus 12 plus 5. So that's going to be positive 12. And we put a 2 in there. We've got 16 minus 12 uh, minus 24 plus 5. That looks like negative 15. You might want to double check my math on this one. And let's see, the, putting a 3 in there, we've got what is that, 54 minus 27 minus 36 plus 5, I think. So that's going to be negative 4. So it looks like the absolute extrema, one of them happens at x equals 2, and the value is negative 15. And the other happens at negative 1, where the value is 
positive 12. So this is the absolute max, this is the absolute minimum on that interval. Let's try one other one. This one uses a trigonometric function. So it says locate the absolute extrema of the function on the closed interval f of x equals pi sine of pi x on the interval from one-third to one. So we want to find out first of all the zeros of this function, um, so of the derivative of this function to find those maxima or minima. So let's take the derivative here. The derivative of sine pi times x is going to be pi times the cosine of pi x. And when we set that equal to zero, what do we get when we solve for x? Let's see. So the cosine of x is zero when x is, or when, it, when we have pi over two. So one half would be a point to look at here. And then 3 pi over 2. So 3 halves would be a point to look at, except 3 halves isn't on the interval, so I'm not even going to worry about that one. So really, the only 0 I have here, because if I put in 1 half for x, I get pi over 2, and that's where the cosine equals 0, so pi times 0 would be 0, um, is 1 half. So my chart then would be my x values to look at are 1 third, one half and one. So the extrema I found by setting the derivative equal to zero and then the endpoints of my interval. So let's go ahead and, and try those out. So I'm going to find sine pi x. Remember we plug these back into the original formula to test where the function is at at those particular points. So if I put one-third in for x I get the sine of pi over three and you may need to refer back to your uh, unit circle to remind yourself what is the sine of pi over 3. Let's see, here's pi over 3. The sine is the y-coordinate. So that's the square root of 3 over 2. And the next value we have is 1 half, so that would be the sine of pi over 2. And the sine of pi over 2 is 1. That's right at the top of that unit circle. And then we have the value 1 to put in here and that would be the sine of pi. And the sine of pi is actually zero. It's over on the other side of the circle. So here we've found our max and our min. Square root of three over two is less than one. So our max is gonna be at one half with a value of one, and our min is gonna be at one with a value of zero. And that makes sense in this function because of course the function, the function of sine goes between zero and one here. So that's a little bit of work with finding the absolute extrema of functions on an interval. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can check us out on the web at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.